In this video, I will be discussing some of the effects that hormone replacement therapy has on our bodies in tandem with alcohol. Information on this subject is still quite limited, so certain risks will be weighed more heavily over time as for the research is done. However, drag shows, gay bars, they're a huge aspect of queer culture and you'll probably find yourself getting offered a drink on many occasions, so it's important to have as much information as you can for inevitably when this comes up. At the end of the day, drinking is a choice. I was initially interested in this question, is drinking safe on HRT? Because I heard from a doctor that it is ill-advised, but with no explanation of how it interacts with the body. Alcohol is a neurotoxin that can irreversibly damage our organs, increasing risk of heart, kidney, and liver failure, inflammation, stroke, extending to brain damage. Aside from accepting all the risks we already take with alcohol, what effects would it have on our hormone replacement therapy? Initially, I couldn't find any specifics on the topic, so I was concerned it was like a, how the dentist tells you to never drink soda, like, fat chance a soda won't destroy my teeth in a week. My main concern that made me interested in this topic is, I really enjoy bourbon, so I have investigated the health risks associated with alcohol and HRT. Now that I've gotten the disclaimer out of the way, and why I'm doing this, I can tell you everything to watch out for. The effects are different depending on which hormone you're taking, testosterone or estrogen. I have yet to see any papers about alcohol interaction with testosterone blockers or progesterone, so like I said earlier, we will learn more in future as many more people are prescribed. However, I will be sticking mainly with testosterone and estrogen for the contents of this video. If you're a trans man, you may already be aware that testosterone is very rough on the organs, potentially resulting in liver toxicity. This is one of the reasons why professional bodybuilders are more prone to organ failure. And then, of course, alcohol has all the other bodily negative effects, so trans men are on a much higher risk when it comes to drinking. This is different from cis men, where the hormone testosterone fights against alcohol within the body, which is why cis men have a much stronger alcohol tolerance than women and trans men, and though trans men do not gain this benefit the same way that cis men do, unfortunately. So, the, the choice is yours, but it is incredibly dangerous for trans men to have alcohol. Now, obviously, liver failure is usually accrued over time, so if you want to have, like, a drink or two with your pals once a month, probably safe, as we know. Estrogen, however, performs the opposite, helping the body to absorb more alcohol and at a faster rate. Obviously, this can result in worse health outcomes for women. However, there is an additional downside to cis women in this scenario. Alcohol can damage the pituitary gland, in the brain, inhibiting the body's ability to create its own hormones. This affects cis men and women both, but since estrogen allows the body to absorb more alcohol, this is especially dangerous for them. Since trans women supplement their estrogen levels, they don't have to worry about the long tail effects of this quite as much. Alcohol also inhibits the liver from filtering out estrogen, allowing the body to absorb more than it naturally would, and resulting in estrogen toxicity. An estrogen overdose can result in hair loss, weight gain, abdominal pain, losing your sex drive, and nausea, vomiting, and insomnia. These bits of info about damaging the pituitary gland and allowing the body to absorb more estrogen may sound enticing at first, and I was quite humored when I first learned about this, because this actually seems kind of funny, if anything, and not terrifying. <laughs> but there's zero research for this to be beneficial, and anybody who would attempt to alter their body through such means is, you know, more likely to face organ failure, or worse, before achieving any desirable results. Plus, we don't really know the extent of those effects because not a lot of people are out here trying to overdose on estrogen, so obviously I discourage you from trying and ending up permanently in medical literature. Another drawback that alcohol causes in estrogen is the density of breast tissue. What this means is, rather than the fat cells lining up as they normally would, alcohol influences the cells to cram themselves together, making breasts functionally smaller and firmer nerfing the breast growth and size. The cells being clustered so tightly together also increases the risk of breast cancer and other chest-related issues. The National Institute of Health's Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism Divisions classifies moderate drinking for men at two or less per day and for women one or less per day. This video is to help you make a more informed decision about your own choices. However, since the National Institute of Health's website doesn't specify drinking differences for cis and trans men, factoring what we know about liver failure and testosterone, I would definitely recommend having much less than what is recommended for women even. And for trans women, it seems alcohol should generally be avoided. At least especially for the first five years of transition where you're expected to see the most amount of changes. And beyond that, hormonal biology is rather identical across the women, so 
I wouldn't be too concerned. I would caution that there is a lack of research on alcohol inhibiting HRT absorption. There simply isn't the information available to discuss what effect it may have on the body in transitioning, especially in the long term. If you want to min-max your transition, abstinence is safest. If drinks are important to you, you are now informed as to what health effects to expect and watch out for. Since trans healthcare is a growing field, if there is any additional details not covered in this video, I will release another video later on with the necessary amendments. And then obviously talk to your doctor because they might know some things that I am still unaware of. Subscribe for more transgender-related content, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.